Good evening, everybody. Hello, everyone. I'm glad to see everybody's beautiful and handsome faces out here tonight. I'm Derek Henson, and I currently serve as your GLC president for the 2021-2022 school year. Welcome to Greek 101. This is where you start your Greek journey. Before we get started, can everybody pull out their phones, please? Hmm? If you don't mind. Oh, I'm going to see you. All right, can you go to your respective browser, Google Chrome, Google Safari, we accept any. Can I get a thumbs up when everybody's made it? Good, good. You made it, you made it, you made it. You in the back, I can't see. Can you put up higher? Thank you, thank you. All right, okay. Can you please go to onlinequestions.org? Put a thumbs up as well if you made it there. Already, I like that. Cool. 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 All right. Do you see where you have to type in the administrator number? No, you haven't made it yet. It says event number, sir. The number is one five three one five three six nine. My fault, my fault. I'm going to rewind it. One. Five, three. One, five, three. Three. Y'all not that Six. slow, are you? Yes, they are. Oh, dear God. Nah. Can I get two hands up if we made it? Wow, people put... Jesus. Okay, babe. The password is no capitals. Bulldog 1865. Oh, no password? No, it ain't no password. I ain't know about what you do. Never mind. I bet. This is the question portion. So after all the orgs have introduced themselves, if you have any questions for them, type it in there. It will come to my iPad and we'll get your questions answered. Thank you. We're going to be taking five to ten questions to this. So first, we're gonna start this program off by introducing all the orgs. We're gonna be going from left to right. All right, hey, how you guys doing? Uh, my name is Tariq Abdullah. Uh, I'm a spring 19 initiate of Rude 5 Rude Social Fellowship Incorporated. Uh, our colors are black and white. Uh, we were found on October 12, 1962, on the campus of Morgan State College, now Morgan State University. Uh, we are the first fraternal organization charter on Bowie State's campus on November 30th, 1967. Prominent member of organization. Uh, one prominent member is G.K. Butterfield. He's a congressman. I'm just text you. You just All right, cool. All right, our call. Uh, we have a couple. The first one is. The second call. One time for my brothers in the back. Keep free. You what? I love the blinker. Appreciate your time. <laughs> oh God. Hey, how are you doing? We're gonna hit a rest of this. Come on, get some energy, bro. Hi, everybody. I am Jason Williams. Mega South Pop Attorney Incorporated, Charlie here, as long as you can tap it. March 1st, 1968, also founded November 17th, 1998. Our colors are royal purple, no gold. Our colors are royal purple, no gold, and our call, we have one. that we do have is Carl G. Woodson, also probably known for the founder of Black History Month that you know. Is that it? How y'all doing, everybody? My name is Abu Salah. I'm a Fall 17 initiate of a, of a Yoda Five Theta Fraternity Incorporated. I crossed at the University of Maryland Eastern Shore, that is the Zeta New Chapter. The chapter here, Blue Chapter, was chartered on April 27, 1971. Um, we have some founders. And these are our call. A five only. Um, 
Greetings. My name is Hafiz Ayuba, a member of the Epsilon Sigma Chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, founded January 5th, 1911 on the campus of Indiana University, Bloomington, Indiana. And our colors are um, crimson and red. And um, our chant is, Yo, baby, yo, baby, yo. And my brothers are here, but yeah. Hello, my name is Alex Sullivan. <laughs> um, I am a part of the Zeta Delta chapter of Delta Sigma Data Sorority Incorporated, which is founded on January 13th, 1913 on Howard University's campus. Um, the Zeta Delta chapter was chartered on April 16th, 1968, and we are the first black sorority on Bowie State College campus. Um, our colors are crimson and cream, and our call is... <laughs> Good evening. My name is Kevin Glasper Jr. I'm a senior sports management major from Prince George's County, Maryland. I'm a member of the Delta Mu chapter, Aliens the Colonial Family of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. Our colors are royal blue and pure white. Um, we were founded January 9, 1914 on the campus of Howard University in Washington, D.C. And the Delta Mu chapter was chartered June 28, 1969, Bowie College. And our call sign is Sorority Incorporated Omicron Gamma Chapter. Our organization was founded January 16, 1920 on the campus of Howard University in Washington, D.C. Our colors are royal blue and white. A notable member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated is Zora Neale Hurston, an author. And the Omicron Gamma Chapter was chartered on the campus of Bowie State College on April 20, 1968. Sorry, I didn't give y'all a notable member. One of our notable members is Hip Huey P. New, founder of Black Panther. And he actually gave me a chance to get myself together. Our call is. representing uh, Sigma Lambda Gamma National Sorority Incorporated. Our colors are shocking pink and majestic purple. We were founded on April 9th, 1990 at the University of Iowa, Iowa City, Iowa. Um, as of right now, we're still an associate chapter here at Green State. Um, and of important and notable member from our organization is Cindy Polo. She's a House Representative for Florida. Um, and our call goes like this. Hey everyone, um, I'm Kaylin Lucis. I'm representing Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. I am a Fall 19 initiate of the Epsilon Lambda chapter. Our organization was founded November 12, 1922 on the campus of Butler University in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, we were chartered here March 31st, 1973. Notable member is MC Light. Yeah, our colors are royal blue and gold. Yep, oh, and our call. And Um, Hello, everyone. My name is Kennedy. I am currently the president of the Exquisite Ada chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. We are the first Black Greek sorority founded January 15th, 1908, on the campus of Howard University. Our colors are salmon pink and apple green. Um, our call. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. I'm Christopher Christian Jr. I am an initiate of Spring 21 from Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated to serve as vice president. We was founded on December 4th, 1906, in Pompeii, Cornell University, in, in the infant New York. 
Boy State was charted. Um, we were charting Ada Zeta on May 13, 1970. Our colors are old, gold, and black. Returning color is yellow rose. And our column goes, Our notified member is Martin Luther King Jr. Oh, yeah, our notable member is Sora Kamala Harris, the vice president. Thank you to everybody that introduced their organization. That was so great of you guys. Now, we're gonna to get to your questions from onlinequestions.org. Hmm, can one fraternity member and one sorority member answer this question? What are you looking for in a member of your organization? What are some qualities? Uh, anybody can pick it up? So, um, personally, for Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, um, we're looking for people that possess our principles that aren't even members yet. So, scholarship, service, sisterhood, finer womanhood. If you are interested in an organization, you know, you should uphold those principles in your own everyday character, and we should be able to see that when we see you on campus. Uh, for Groove Five Brothers Social Fellowship Incorporated, uh, really just looking for somebody that can really go against the grain, you know, not do what everybody, you know, expects you to do, but do what you think is like. When you see a problem, really for us, you see a problem that's needed to like, be solved. We're looking for somebody that'll solve those problems without needing somebody to watch them. That makes sense. Somebody that can be independent. For Mega Sci Five Attorney Incorporated, Omega does not seek men, men of Omega at the seat of Omega. Uh, for our membership, the whole tradition, uphold our criminal principles. If you want to join our organization, you'll find a way to join. Uh, also, lastly, uh, be yourself. Anyone else have anything to add? In addition to that, I will also say, um, personally, be active on campus. Uh, don't join just for the colors, but actually do stuff on campus too. That's not a good way for us. Someone who's willing to do the work, because I feel like people see like the performances, the colors, the parties, but it is actual work. So someone who is prepared to take over, to take that responsibility and actually do it. Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity is incorporated for men of mainly deeds, scholarship, and love for all mankind. We also look for authenticity. Somebody who's unique, somebody who's just to themselves, not to themselves, but who's about themselves or who's authentic towards themselves. And who's all, because you gotta be all to be number one. What is the best way to show interest as a commuter besides events? The floor is open. Yes, sir. So, speaking for being a commuter student myself and being a transfer from PGCC before I came here, I mean, Really, if you know there's an event going on, just show up to the event, get to know people, and you know, speak up. Talk to people on the side, just be discreet about it. Don't just scream in the room saying, I'm, I'm interested in your organization. Hello, um, one way to show interest as a commuter is just keeping up with the social media pages and things like that, and just trying your hardest to find ways to be interactive. You don't always have to go to every program because being someone who was a commuter, Waldorf is very far, so I understand the struggle I do. So, yeah, just be interactive and follow the page because it'll keep you updated with a lot of the things that are going around. Um, going off what she just said, um, kind of the same too. Um, just follow our Instagram page, and if you do come to an event, you can pull a brother to the side and just express interest. Don't be shy, you know, you don't bite. Just to piggyback on what everybody else said, uh, really it's the same thing. 
uh, make sure that you come out to our events. Uh, make sure that if you do want to approach us, approach us discreetly. Uh, make, make sure you're able to make a conversation because we're regular people. There's nothing that you know separates us from me and you. So let's make friends. Make sure that everybody you know, is comfortable. So if you seek an interest, make sure that you're able to hold a conversation and be yourself again. On top of social media and things, I know on our page we have our email as well, so definitely shoot an email asking about community service because we also don't want to just see you at events. We want to see you doing community service, doing work for the community. So that's another way to reach out and make a good impression. Does anybody else have anything to add? Oh, okay. How do you express interest in an organization? and be discreet about it? Um, pretty much, like everybody said, with the events and programs, uh, we remember faces and names. Um, also, don't hesitate to be shy. Like, I know we all wear these, you know, letters and things like that, and y'all know, oh, don't walk on the plot, but, you know, don't be afraid to come up and speak to us or pull one of us to a side. Um, definitely pull somebody to the side to express interest and be discreet with it. Be aware of your surroundings, who you with, what people's looking at, what people saying. Um, and just be mindful of just who's around you while you're trying to show an interest because people have ears and people figure out and look at you um, while doing so. I would also say that um, a more formal way to discreetly um, express your interest is that you could actually email that chapter a formal interest letter if you wanted to because it's only going to that chapter, so that's a good, a good discreet, discreet way to express interest. Yeah, I would also like to add, like, make sure you show your face at programs because eventually we'll be able to recognize who you are. I would just say at events, make sure you stand out because that gets our attention in you as well. Um, but yeah, reaching out to the chapter emails, like get active on our pages or like build relationships with us on a personal level first. Does anybody else have anything to add? Are transfer students allowed to apply? The answer to that question is yes. Transfer students are allowed to apply to organizations, but the stipulation is you have to have 12 credits as you come into the school. So after you transfer in, you need 12 semester credits to be able to apply. And to be able to apply as a freshman in rule, you need 24 credits. And freshman going to sophomore, you need 24 credits. And a popular question was, what orgs are having a line in the spring semester? All right, so in regards to who's having lines or intake classes, where it's not a general specific, it really depends on a couple of things, whether they were approved by their national or their regional organization. And normally at Bowie, the culture is that if the chapter is getting low, then they would definitely look to have intake. So it's not a specific, it's not saying, okay, you're selected to have and take this semester, you're selected. It's when they get approval, and once they get approval, then they get put a request into my office, and then that is approved. So it's not saying, okay, well, these people are guaranteed, because it's not really a guarantee. So you will just have to find out each semester, just make sure that you are actively following those organizations to see who has requested to have and take. What makes your organization special to you, and what made you choose to join your respective organization? You can go left or right. I'll go. Ready. Um, so, our organization was special to me because, one, how I feel you could change the world is through children and trying to make a better future for us. We were founded by seven educators, so that really stood out to me. And on top of just meeting the members and being in the space with other members of the organization, I never felt I had to change myself in any way. I could just be who I was and it was accepted. I didn't feel I had to fit a, a cookie cutter 
anything. It was just, I could come in, be who I was, it was accepted for who I was, and they appreciated the individuality and the originality that I could bring to the chapter. So I thought that was very special. And I also liked seeing them around campus. There's lots of high positions and everything that we've done in the past is just amazing. So, yeah. Um, I know for me personally, what really got me interested in the organization, well, for real, well, being a transfer student coming in, I only knew about fraternity life from movies, um, you know, watching different movies. So I kind of thought it was weird joining organizations, to be honest. But going around the grooves, at least, the culture of the organization really what brought me in. They really treated me like a family before I was even there. And I saw the pride they had in the organization as far as how they put, to put events together, um, how they took care of everybody that was coming on the plot. They made sure they got to know people. And they actually, like, you know, they treated you like a person, pretty much. That's really what I liked, liked about the organization. And, you know, with the history of the organization, we're actually the only organization on campus that our letters are actually committed, you know. And we're actually found in Morgan State, the only organization here that's found in Morgan's Iotis. And for me, I mean, it's really just a family-oriented part of the organization that I like about it, personally. Um, I chose uh, this sorority in particular because um, I'm a very sorry, uh, service-oriented person. I've just grown up serving people all my life, and I've also seen other stores in, do the same service on such a broad spectrum. And to that, like that to me was very moving, and to be a part of an organization that does that, it just allows me to continue my dreams and goals of helping and serving other people, especially in the black community. I chose Phi Beta Sigma because um, pretty much just just the brotherhood, honestly. Um, my father's actually an Alpha, a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. And um, just when I got on this campus, I ran track. I had a few track uh, teammates who were Sigmas, and they just took me under their wing. They kind of mentored me in a sense. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much why I joined Phi Beta Sigma. I personally chose my organization of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated because growing up I had a mentor who was a member of the organization and just the older I got and getting on Bowie State's campus I feel as though all of the women of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated that I met they upheld that same mold that my mentor had, mentor had and I just felt as though I was encountering like the same type of women within the organization and it was women with principles that I wanted to align myself with. Um, for me, it was the founder principles for IOTA. Then on top of that, I met other brothers who was on my campus at the time and we had some of the morals, some of the values. Um, they welcomed me. They welcomed me since day one, and I felt really comfortable with them. But when I did my research, I realized that everything that they stand for is what I stand for, a person too as well. So they draw me in. Um, something special about Yoda. I like how our organization's only, but it's so big, but it's so small. So literally, if I go from Maryland to California, nine times out of ten, they're probably your brother from this side of town or just anywhere. Like we all really know each other in our whole organization. Um, I chose my organization because um, one of our base, most important principles to me at least is cultural awareness. I feel like culture is a very big part of who we are and my organization focuses a lot on appreciating it and bringing awareness to the different cultures that many of our sisters have across the nation. And I also wanted to say that uh, my sorority focuses a lot on women empowerment. So I think that's just something that I hold very true and dearly to my heart. Um, I personally wanted to be a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated after my research and realizing all the strength that the women are part of that sorority had. Um, the reason why I chose Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated because um, the men of this fraternity are the blueprint of what it was supposed to be to be real bad. 
their appearance, their status, their presence, um, the way how they carry themselves, their service and acts, the way how they impact people. Um, it ties to the people and the men that was into my lives, and that's something that I want to fulfill. What makes my organization so special was the men that joined it. Again, from earlier, I said about uh, Carter G. Wilson, one of my favorite members that's been applied from the Vegas High Five Attorney Incorporated, and also the men that dedicated their lives as far as you know, changing society with all our living men. So that's what made me want to join. In addition to the men I've been on campus, they all made me want to join. Uh, if y'all know, we got no enemy. reason why I joined my organization is because um, I had a role model and you know I really looked up to him and he always told me this quote um, if you want to go somewhere faster you go alone if you want to go further you go with like-minded people so that's why I joined my fraternity and one thing special about us is we have no honorary members you have to earn it Thank you to everyone that answered the questions and what's up here tonight for Greek 101 representing the organizations. Uh, we're going to have you guys step off to allow for our guest speakers. Give it up for them, everybody. Next, we have a very special guest, which is our keynote speaker, Mr. Gerard D. Benjamin, is a Florida International University Cybersecurity Apprenticeship Program Director and Chief Executive Officer of the lead firm. He is responsible for curriculum development, leadership training, keynote events, and serves as an organization consultant for over 120 colleges and universities across the country. Oversight training includes higher education enrollment management consultation, student leadership, Greek life and students' affairs, professional team building. Mr. Benjamin is the founder and host of the Black and Multicultural Greek Empowerment Summit that is held in Atlanta and serves as a conference coordinator for the Harbor Institute Annual Road Trip. A native of A native of Louisiana, Mr. Benjamin received a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration from Florida Memorial University. He received a Master of Business Administration degree with a concentration in Management from Nova Southeastern University. He is currently pursuing his Doctor of Philosophy in Electrical and Computer Engineering from Florida International University. Please give a warm round of applause for Mr. Benjamin. How's everybody doing tonight? All right, let's, uh, let's clap it up for our representatives that came out. Great work to all of you. So, uh, well, thank you for the warm introduction, Brother President. A little bit about myself, y'all. I'm from Nagas, Louisiana. I've seen them struggling to get through it. Uh, anybody who's from a small town, you know how we do. I'm, I'm the town next to uh, Alexandria and Shreveport. But uh, even though my town's small, I know how to make a mean gumbo. And so, uh, for all my people out there today, I realize you're giving me some of your time real late, so I want to get straight to the facts. But I'm going to need a little energy from you, all right? So check this out. If, I, if I'm giving you energy, you got to give me some. Now, Steve told me to keep you an hour, but if you give me energy, I can do this in about 35 and a half minutes. Can we work it out? A little bit more than that. Hold on, that's an hour clap right like there. We can do a little bit better. All right, cool. So we're going to work it out. All right, so check this out. The first thing we're going to address is when you think about um, joining a Greek life organization, regardless if it's the Divine Nine or any other organizations, 
What's important that we realize is that uh, the, the thing that's going to end our culture or our traditions or our rich history in Greek life is hazy. Oftentimes, to be quite honest, we try to unpack so many other things that could jeopardize and make Greek life an endangered species. But to be quite honest, our greatest risk is hazy. Not because students necessarily want to do it to you, but there's a couple different factors. Um, the gentleman who was in another organization, he said his father was in another one. I'm in a similar situation. Uh, I remember when I was asking my dad, I called him and told him I had went to an information, an obsession similar to this. I said, hey, dad, I'm ready to join Greek life. He got super excited. He said, oh, man, the bro's going to be excited. I was like, ooh. He was like, son, I've been waiting on this. I'm going to call my LBs right now. I was like, don't do that yet. Uh, and so I was trying to get it out, y'all, no matter how I worded it. He had already made his mind up. So I finally get out. I said, Dad, I'm going to need a little money. I'm about to join Five Eight Sigma. Go for it. And he looked at me and was like, huh? And so he, he, he immediately got the other phone. He called his LBs and said, hey, man, my son at this school, evidently he was so focused on his assignments, he missed the the cues information. And, and what I need you to do is uh, call the advisor and see what they can do. So he calls me back. Son, I called the advisor and um, he said he worked in the English department. Run over there right fast. He gonna be so you make a line. And I was like, Daddy, what? The that's not that's not what I'm trying to tell you. He said, what they doing over there that make you not want to join? And so he was convinced he had a plan for me. So when he finally agreed to drop me a few dollars, it was much, uh, much some time ago, so with no cash app, with no Zelle, with no PayPal, Daddy mailed me a money order, the slowest mail he could mail me. I said, Daddy, why you chose a money order? He said, I was hoping they got to you, you changed your mind. And so finally, y'all, I joined my organization. Be quite honest, I'm from a small town, faith-based home. My mom's a preacher, and uh, I remember when she came to my probate show. Mama knew nothing about Greek life. My mama don't let no church, y'all. Church and church only. And so she came to the probate show. We was marching in the front of the yard, headed to the show. She said, why my baby frowning so hard? You think they hear them or something? I thought this was gonna be a celebration. I could hear, I was trying to ignore her because I was a little tired. We get up there, y'all, I got so excited and wrapped up in the moment. Uh, much like some of you will when, you, when your neophyte presentation, your probate come, Y'all, I was super excited. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, got to let carry it away, to be quite honest. I said, if anybody do anything to my LBs, they gonna have to see me. By far as I was gonna go, I wasn't gonna, definitely wasn't gonna cuss. My mama was sitting there, right? Then I got so wrapped up in the morning, I took my mask off. I said, I love Sigma. I die for Sigma. My mama said, no, you ain't. <laughs> Boy, I was so ashamed. I'm looking like, mama, this is my moment. You're wrong in it, right? And so after that, y'all, I became chapter president, ran for international vice president of Phi Beta Sigma, got elected, served for two years, and I had a chance to go to the keynote uh, uh, presentation and a speech at the undergraduate luncheon for Omega Psi Phi. Who's sitting in the back of the audience? My dad. Uh, I knew he was a bit embarrassed, looking like, I know my son ain't coming to my conclave. They're going to speak to my people. So I shouted him out at the beginning to go ahead and make it real awkward. At the end, he gave me a hug. He said, son, I love you, and I appreciate you. We don't get a lot of our love yous in our family from the men in our house, so to be quite honest, it meant a whole lot in that moment. He said, what are you going to change about the organization? So that's, I kind of want to park our topic there before we address Hazen tonight. Earlier, uh, one of the leaders stated that uh, they listed a notable member of every organization. I was excited to see them use that term notable, because I can remember when I was interviewing for Phi Beta Sigma, y'all, an uh, old head uh, had invited me to the uh, informational, and then which in turned into an interview. And y'all, the chair uh, was, was in front of about um, uh, uh, quite a few older brothers. And I sat there, palms sweating, y'all. You sit there, and to be quite honest, I said, I was going to say whatever it took to join. So they asked me what I did for fun. I said, uh, you know, I was a Sunday school and vacation Bible school teacher. And, uh, and I loved the Lord. He heard my cry. He said, oh, well, do you drink or do you smoke? Not I. I only drink water. He said, could you give me one notable member of Phi Beta Sigma? Y'all, I was so excited because I thought I had Googled real good before I came. I said, Emmett Smith. He said, no, one more chance. 
Y'all, my palms are so sweaty, I had wet stains on my dress pants. He said, uh, one more time, I said, uh, Jerry Rice. He said, get out. I tried to pretend like I couldn't hear him, because it was 36 people outside. <clears throat> and I said to myself, this chapter traditionally only have an intake of 10. If 36 people are done, he's telling me to get out. I ain't got a good chance, and I already told my daddy. So I said, uh, excuse me? He said, get out. Y'all, my little heart was broke. So I got up out of there. I said, I ain't leaving nowhere. I said, I said, I do They got ready to break down. He said, young man, come in here and tell Alan. I want you to help me pick up chairs. In my mind, I'm like, hell, y'all ain't picking me. Why you want me to put the chairs up? But y'all, I figured, why not, right? So I picked up the chairs. He said, early, you couldn't get it together. What's a notable man? Well, let's be honest, I've been outside two hours, so I've been Googling. I said, John Lewis. He said, now you understand what I was saying, son? That's a notable member. So, Bowie, tonight I want to talk to you real brief. The difference between notable and famous. Earlier, I gave famous members of Phi Beta Sigma. And so when you become a member of the respective org that you desire to join, because otherwise you would be here this late at night. Are you going to be a notable member of the organization or are you going to be a famous member of the organization? And I understand that so often those two become synonymous and we believe they're of the same. So I ask you again, are you going to become a notable member or a famous member? I'm sure you got a cell phone, so if you feel obligated, please pull it out in the notes section and take notes. Uh, notable is greater than famous if I was writing things down tonight. And so as I write those things down, I'm asking myself and I'm asking you, what is the difference, uh, uh, good sisters of Alpha Kappa Alpha, uh, uh, the difference between notable and famous? And so, uh, don't mind if being a country storyteller. When I was growing up, y'all, my sister um, was, was, was the lover of my life. We only had one little sister, y'all. Jazzy May, we call her, call her Jazzy May. You know, in the country, we gonna call you a middle name that ain't gonna belong to you. And so Jazzy May, my responsibility was to walk her to school every morning, good sisters. My mama was very direct with me. She'd give us instructions in the morning. We'd pray every morning before we go to school. I was getting the cold out of my eyes. Couldn't really help mama, but you knew you had to be in the kitchen getting ready to pray. So as I was walking, Jessica, she said, now, Jared, there's going to be one rule. You cannot take the shortcut on the way home. Everybody in the neighborhood take the shortcut. So what you think I want to do? Take the shortcut. Save me 10 minutes and walking in that hot country heat. So I say, okay, no, mama, I got you. I go outside, I look at Jazzy May. I say, baby, we taking a shortcut, you hear me? She said, I got you. I say, now when we get back in the house, don't you tell mom what she said. Shh. So I hold Jazzy hand, we hold her hands. Y'all, we get to the stop sign. I drop that hand, because I'm cool. I hold that hand no longer. We get to school that evening. I say, hey, mom, we want to go to this, uh, this graveyard. Are you ready? Mama say don't go to the graveyard, y'all, because it's drunks and crackheads in the graveyard. I believe that she said it could be drunk as Cootie Brown. Y'all, I don't even know who Cootie Brown is, but Mama said it, so I believe it. I remember when I seen that first crackhead when I cut that cone. I said, Jasmine, be sure you follow me and follow me fast. I wasn't scared. I just was real nervous. One of the drunks was laying on the grave and got up. Woo, super nervous. I looked back. My sister was on my heels. And I'm looking like I said, follow me, but not that close. We get to the gate. It was a little bit of hole. I pulled the gate back for her. It was some bushes, some limbs. I picked the limbs up. I say, Jasmine, take off super fast. Jasmine getting through that one. We get home, y'all, it's 3.30. And who I see? Mama call. Mama don't only be home till 6. So good, good ladies and Delta Sigma Theta, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be, I'd be lying if I ain't tell you my, my heart was in my toes. I was nervous. Because I'm from the country. My mama don't tell you in town. Now she whoops you good. So mama looks at me. She say, well, I'm going to beat you. Now, I don't know if any of y'all ever had a whooping before. So I'm going to assume I'm talking to all rich, privileged folk who ain't never been disciplined this way. So I'm going to break a whooping down for you so we all understand what a whooping is. A whooping is when a bell starts here. And your mama going to swing it over and over like this here. You can choose not to cry, but she just going to do it for a little bit longer to be sure she get a tear out your eye. Are we good on what a whooping is? I'm just checking. 
And so uh, for me, to be quite honest, I knew a whooping was coming. So when your mama, for those who have been through this story, but when your mama says she's going to give you a whooping, the first thing you want to say is ma'am. As if you didn't hear, she's offering a whooping. The next thing you want to do is you want to brace yourself real low to catch the impact. Anybody ever been through a whooping, maybe you can relate. You also want to use your peripheral to look to your left and your right to be sure you don't back up into nothing that trap you into that whooping. So it went a little like this. She said, boy, I'm going to beat you today. I said, ma'am. Y'all are looking left, if I look right. I plant that good foot, because the whooping might come now, and I got to be ready. Well, I said, Mama, why am I going to get this whooping? Now, that was a bit bold, because you normally don't ask why, you just get it. She said, I'm whooping you not because you were disobedient. I'm whooping you because you sent your sister through the graveyard without you. Or, you must have went without her. So I'm a bit confused, looking at my sister, you gotta give it a look. Girl, did you tell her what Jazz looking at me like. So then I said, Mama, well, why would you believe that? She said, because I looked at your forearm and I noticed you have scratches that Jasmine don't have. So she had to go a different way than you. Most recently in 2021, Kamala Harris, member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, uh, became our Vice President of the United States. While most of us, um, including myself, I used some of her past experiences to be a bit frustrated, but I will tell you, uh, my options positioned me to vote for Sister Harris. When she won, because I have a 12-year-old daughter who was watching the inauguration, I celebrated that moment because my daughter looked at the TV, y'all, and she says, uh, Daddy, if, uh, if she can be the vice president, so can I. Y'all, that thing hit me special, so I let tear fell. I said, girl, it's hot. I'm sweating, going over to your mom. Gave her a little hug and I thought about it for a second and said, we really championed the gender barrier. And they credited, actually two Greek life organizations championed the polls. But I'd be remiss if I told you that I, I was excited in the moment for her victory and her victory only. What I reflected on is, um, what if hazing and risk that we allow traditions to embrace would have made our organizations extinct? Would we be able to celebrate that success in 2021? I went even a little bit further, ladies of Delta Sigma Theta. I didn't just credit uh, that great woman of Alpha in that season. In 1974, Sherry Chisholm was the first African American woman to get a primary, a majority of nomination. And although she wasn't successful in the midst of that season, that woman of Delta actually did something similar that I experienced in the graveyard. We're, 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 so at that moment, my mama said, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to explain yourself. For anybody who ever was approaching a whooping with their parents, you know 30 seconds really mean five. So I braced myself and said, Mom, explain to me why you believe that, um, that, that my sister went another direction. She goes, because you have scratches on your forearm, and she does. I said, Mama, well, the reason I have them is because I told Jasmine wherever I go, she has to follow me. And when we got to the gate, I held it open and I felt the bar where I hit my arm. And when we got to the bushes, I held them over and I told her she could go. So what I really believe is, while we celebrate the successes of Greek life, leaders excelling and no longer being visitors at the White House, but being residents at the White House, we have to celebrate that in 1974, somebody held sticker bushes and held the fence so in 2021, somebody could walk through the pathway. Well, I'm parking it there to tell you that um, if you want to be notable, you're going to have to make some pathways as leaders. Otherwise, you're just going to be a famous Greek. And, and I share with you that famous Greek life only going to get you likes on Instagram, but notable actions are going to enter in the workforce and change your trajectory. And to be quite honest, my, my old profiles used to tell me, if you're going to be famous versus notable, you just got a piece of paper with a member number. But if you're going to be notable in your actions, now you have an affiliation that can last a lifetime. So, although I would love to just address the leaders on the front row, I decided this conversation for the next three minutes would be for the leaders I see on the back coming up to the front row. If you're choosing to join the organization to represent it for a season, this may not be an opportunity for you. If you're choosing to join the organization to honor traditions that don't exemplify scholarship and service, 
these organizations might not be for you. The hazing law for Maryland is of the statute 3-607. It says if you're caught hazing, you're subject to either six months in jail or a $500 fine or both. Well, well why, why six months doesn't seem that long because we're joining our organizations for a lifetime, I challenge you to tell you when I say we will become extinct if we honor those traditions, I would love to share with you what causes our biggest bill in Greek life. In the National Panhellenic Council, I've been tasked by several of our international presidents to do a GRISNAP analysis and assessment throughout the years. And what I've learned is our biggest bill is liability insurance. How many people have a driver's license to drive a car by show of hands? Now, while your hand is up, please don't take it down. Raise a hand like me in church. Um, um, so my question is, how many of you stay in now if you pay your own car insurance? I want everybody to look around at the folks standing. That means your parents don't pay your car insurance. You pay your own car insurance. Now, 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 now you see folks standing now. Now, 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 help me out. I want you to clap if, if you pay your car insurance monthly versus every six months. <laughs> now, we all know there is an option to pay it every six months, but the way my checking and my savings set up. <laughs> right? And so, uh, please take a seat, thank you. Um, what, what I want to share with you is the average premium for a Greek life organization is around $592,000 a year. They don't get the option to pay it monthly, like our great, our great leaders that just recently clapped did. They only get the option to pay it in a one lump payment. Our highest insurance policy of our Greek life organizations from the great leaders sitting at the table is $1.3 million a year. Why do you think it's so high? Anybody? I'm sorry. Where are we at? The lights in my eyes. Where, where, the, where the answer came from? Mo multiple claims is a great answer. How about this in, in, in this area? Up top, up top. Why do you think it's so high? My good friends on the front row, why is it so high? Hazen's a great answer. On this side, up top. Liability, great answer. But I can share with you some of the answers. Well, the first thing is they monopolize the industry. For CBFO, cultural based fraternal organizations, only one insurance company insures us. So we can't shop around, right? So for me, I'm insured with Progressive. Mm -hmm. My neighbor, because I live in Louisiana, we just had a severe hurricane. I learned that my neighbor got State Farm. Their roof got fixed before mine. And so, um, I say that to say, when you monopolize and corner the industry, we don't really have a lot of options. So when they raise the price, if nobody else is willing to insure us, do we have other options? So as the insurance goes up, what happens with the fees to join? What do they do? Right? Right? Okay, as the insurance goes up, the fees go up, how many lawsuits do you think we encounter? Right? And so, um, in... ECU, a young lady was joining an organization and she suffered from sleep deprivation. Her, her car wrapped around a tree and she died in North Carolina. And so um, when she died, uh, so many different versions of the story went out to say that if we didn't cause sleep deprivation. In fact, they, they said she was coming from getting her hair done. Some said she was on the way to a conference. Uh, another story, young brother was joining in California and the tradition was to go on a hike, and they uh, used a, a cactus as a makeshift paddle and struck him on his buttocks, and, 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 and his body went into a shock, and he died. And when his mom was called to identify the body, he was face down. All she could see was the thorns in his butt. And so she, she, she said, could you turn him over? And she identified him and said, that's my son. And I remember when they were doing the interview on CNN, I grew emotional because I could only imagine that my mom had to show up to the morgue and identify me, and the first thing she saw was thorns in my butt. So they rolled him over, and she began to go into a shock, and she said, I want to speak to who did it. And so everybody was so concerned that she was going to sue the organization. 
she was going to sue a, the CSU, California State University system. She said, I don't have interest in it. The young men who did it have to attend the service because I want to ask them were their chapter traditions greater than my son's life? And to be quite honest, I don't know if I could answer that question if it was asked of me. And why do I bring that up? Because oftentimes, it's not that you did it, leaders, or that you allowed it to be done, leaders. It's that you was around when it happened, right? Everybody familiar with FAMU? FAMU, everybody remember Brother Champion that died? He was going on the bus. The tradition was you go down the bus and, and you, you go through a gauntlet and you suffer abuse. And when they were coming off the bus to perform, they noticed he never came off because he had died from internal bleeding and abuse and he was on the bus dead. And so as I was researching the law, the law case of it, the case study, the, the section leader is the only one who got the six months of incarceration. Everybody else got probation and, and, and other sentences that didn't cause them to go to jail. And the section leader never touched him. Why do I bring that up today? Because you don't have to be the person who does the act. If you're in leadership and you allow it to take place, you're causing more damage to our organization. So if you if you, if you got a dad like mine, I'm going to put him out there. My daddy gave me some instructions with his, with his money on He said, don't be paper now. I'm going to tell you now, son, if you're in my family, you're going to be made. So what did Jared do? I went to my dean, I went straight to him. Hey, bro, I don't know the difference, but my daddy said I gotta be made. There's gonna be people in this audience today that's gonna have that conversation because your parents are gonna have that conversation with you. The legacy of your family is saying, gonna say, we have a certain way we must join this organization. Those are gonna be our famous people, y'all, not our notable people. Don't allow the actions of those individuals to compromise our longevity. We clear what all longevity mean, right? So one of my last stories before I pass the mic back to Brother Steve. Um, Y'all, my LB, he was the dean of the line after I deemed the line. I graduated, I left. He made a 172 on the LSAT. Any, any, any aspiring lawyers in the room? So we clear what the LSAT is, correct? 172 is eight points from a perfect school. He got into 32 law schools that he applied to. We all lived in a frat house together so when the mail would come, I was celebrating his success by saying, boy, you didn't got in every school you applied at. So Jared graduates from the graduate school. I hear our chapter was suspended for six months because they got called hazy. No surprise, because we had our own internal traditions. And so um, I said, who deemed the line? They told me it was my LB. Nice. So he had a 4.0 GPA. And uh, on, the, on, on, your, on your transcript, your, your, your grades are in 10 point font. We're familiar with 10 point font, right? We all didn't type on computers. But your hazing allegation, if it's founded, they put it in 14 point font by state law. So if I'm looking at a transcript, which one I'm going to see first? Straight A's or the hazing conviction, correct? So now the school say, before you can come, you got to submit your official transcript. So he submits his official transcript. He began to get new letters in the mail. 13 schools rescinded their acceptance and full scholarships for law school. Would it be wise to say he made a decision in the moment that affected the longevity of his life? Yes or no? That's, a, that's, 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 that's to stay here two hours, yes. Yes or no? Yes. That might get us out of here in about 48 minutes. Yes or no? Yes. Now, now y'all talking like y'all ready to go. All right, so, so, so why am I bringing that up to you? We all, who don't, who, who don't have goals? So you stand up. I, well, I want everybody to see you to be sure you don't get picked. Okay, who all don't want to graduate from Bowie State? I want you to stand up too, because be sure we don't pick them either. Look around the front row. Be sure you look back at one of them young ladies stand up. Got to be sure we don't pick them. Right? And so why do I bring that up? I bring it up to simply tell you that. You have to make decisions that's going to position you not only to be notable, but to join our organizations for a lifetime. So I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you, we're not, we're not, we're not an IFC, NPC, uh, a type of structure. Why do I bring that up? We, 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 we don't join with the idea that this experience is semester-driven or collegiate experience. The reason I know it because my dad is 68 years old and he's still walking around the house, y'all. 
And so I bring that up to say, you're making a life commitment when you join our organizations. And so if you're making a life commitment, you got to move a little bit different. Y'all, I, I was a sophomore when I joined Phi Beta Sigma. And I was banking with Bank of America, ladies. And uh, uh, when I was banking with Bank of America, Bank of America used to let me overdraft my account. I used to slide that car kind of on faith and prayer. I don't know, maybe I'm talking to all rich folk, y'all ain't never had a situation like that. I would slide that card and look down at the machine like, well that thing got approved. And so one day in frustration, I opted to get in my Cavalier and, um, and drive to another bank. I don't know if you ever drove your car when it's on E, but um, I had a friend decide to get in the car with me when it was on E. He looked over and said, hey, bro, your car on E. What do you say when somebody tell you that? I looked over and said, I know my car. <laughs> and so I said, you got at least 40 miles. As I was driving, I get my car and I started it, y'all. Uh, when you start your car and it's on E with the gas light on, you drive differently. First thing I did was I cut the air condition off. <laughs> oh, oh, I ain't the only one, huh? Okay, okay. I rolled all the windows down. To be quite honest, I even cut my cell phone off. I didn't know what it might do, but I was trying to preserve every moment of gas. I didn't, didn't play no music. I didn't even hum. I just drove. And when I got downhill to my people who've been through this storm before, I took my foot off the gas and I coasted. So when I pull up to Chase Bank, I, I use my peripheral and I walk in Chase Bank and I park and I had ten dollars to my name, Brother Steve. And the bank lady says, how can I help you? Y'all, I heard, but the air condition was feeling so good, I didn't want to address her back. She says, can I help you again? Well, I decided this is my time to let her know I'm a college student. Anybody ever had to tell somebody you're a college student when you're expecting a discount? Okay, I, I, I thought y'all was going to be family then. And so I go in and I said, no, I'm a college student. I need a checking and a savings. She says, okay, um, that's going to be $25 minimum deposit for a checking. $25 minimum deposit for a savings. In the situation I was in, um, I just pretended like I had a phone call and I left. Got in my car to drive back to campus and I saw Wells Fargo. I said, I'm going to pull into Wells Fargo. Y'all, I pulled into Wells Fargo and I went in there and the lady said, can I help you? I wouldn't go play like I played the last lady, but I did see a bowl of peppermints and they was free. So I took six for me and six for my girlfriend because I ain't stingy. I saw some free ink pens. I took six for me and six for my girlfriend because, of course, again, I'm not stingy. The lady said, can I help you? Yes, ma'am. I'm a college student. I need a bank account. She goes, okay. Um, um, it's $5 for a checking, $5 for a savings. She took the words out of my mouth and said, look at God. Baby, I was so happy, y'all. I signed the paperwork. I was getting ready to walk out. The lady says, who do your mama bank with? I said, she banked with the same place. She says, uh, can I call her? Y'all, I'm going to be honest. I looked at the lady. Really, really professional Caucasian lady, but I didn't think she was positioned to talk to my southern preaching mama. I said, I don't think we should make that phone call. She says, no, do it. No, do it. How many people have had to call their parents when you need something by show of hands? When you call your parents, you got to kind of reach them on their level, right? You call your parents if you're in school, it's the first thing you do. You talk about your grades, right? You know, them grades good. Look at my child. They're going to graduate. So I called my mama on her level. The phone rang. She answered. I said, hey, mama, God is good. She says, all the time. I said, all the time, mama. God is good. She said, hey, what do you? I said, he's a lily in the valley. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. He, she said, oh, child, you're going to make me shout. What do you need? I passed the phone to the lady. <laughs> and I'm like, this is going to go real bad. Lady gets on the phone. She says, Reverend Benjamin, in this season, God brought your child to me, and I'm going to expand his territory. I just need something. I looked at her and said, you done did this before. <laughs> Y'all, I, I looked up. I was like, I know. That's what she, my mama said, what do you need, baby? She said, I just need a $50 overdraft protection for this young man of God. She said, put her back on the phone. Y'all, my heart beating so fast. Mama get on the phone. You know, it's serious when your mama talking through her teeth. She said, now, boy, let me tell you something. 
I said, ma'am, she said, I'm gonna do it this time. Put that lady on the phone. Lady gets back on the phone, they do all the little jazz with the paperwork. I get ready to take my little debit card picture. She said, we're gonna take it on three. Y'all count for me, you ready? On count, y'all do it on the count of three. One, two, three. Give me a slow count though. One, two, three. Ready, go. One, two, three. She snapped. She said, what's wrong with your hands? I said, baby, it's stuck like that. I took that picture, got out there with my debit card. I called my girlfriend. I said, baby, 50 plus 10. Baby, we got $60. We're going to Chick-fil-A and the movies tonight. Y'all, I got in that car. Based off my little financial aid check I was getting, that was $120. But on the 20 hours a week, they was letting me work at financial aid for work study. I said, I did good because that was an every two week decision that I was making. And how many people every two weeks you get that little check and you still felt like your account really wasn't hitting on nothing, right? Okay, so I ain't by myself. I thought I was just talking to rich folks, Steve. And so with that being said, I immediately understood that uh, I had to make a decision that could change my trajectory on this every two week basis. Does anybody by show of hand have a problem with the decision that I made? No? Y'all, I gave the six peppermints to my girlfriend. You sure you're good? I kept them. You know, the cheap eating peas right the best. And so, so, so with that being said, I asked a question. Can I change it up a little bit? Suppose I go to a Delta Sigma Theta information. Right? Then I get the information that just don't fit me, sisters. Cause, cause, and so I decide I'm going to go to a Zeta Phi Beta information. I get the information, Sarah, but it just don't fit me. So I hear about AKA having a rush and I come over to y'all information. I find the information fits me pretty good and I want to interview and join. But your chapter traditions at your institution say, I don't want all these informationals. I just want to be Greek. We can't pick them. We agreed that these decisions are life decisions, not every two week decisions, correct? So I challenge your chapter and institutional traditions that say, we can't, we can't go get the information because we're not giving out the password and the grip of the information or all. We're just giving out information. So why am I sharing this with you today? Get the information that best supports your life decision. Otherwise, based on popularity or heat of the moment, you may join with your friends, join, get your letters, and not be a committed worker because it was not the fit for you. So I challenge you to ensure you get the information that fits. Go query it, look it up, understand the culture and get the information. The question is asked why before we get ready to walk out the door. Why do folks hate us? They accept it at high risk. If I was taking notes tonight because I wanted to be sure I got picked and I had a big old word for the interview, I would probably write down cognitive dissonance. If you struggle to spell it, anybody going to shame you. Just tell Siri, write down cognitive dissonance. It simply means knowing the right thing to do, but choosing to do the wrong thing. That's one of the whys. The other why is acceptance at a high price. Would it be fair to say my LB accept the risk at a high price? Right? The other one is ignorance to alternative options. So when I became chapter president, I wanted to address the whys. And I said, we're going to make some changes. Oh, I remember my initiation night. Y'all, I was so excited. I was holding a candle in the wax. It was hitting my hands. I said, oh, this money out of pain. I got to hold the candle with my bags. If I ever become chapter president, we at least going to get some candle holders. So y'all, not only did I change the candle holders, I changed that acceptance at a high price. I didn't care if you had to greet me with a 21-page greet, and I cared if you had a resume. I didn't care if you had a, a thousand followers on Instagram, because in my day, that was a lot of followers, y'all. I cared if you had a LinkedIn account. I cared if you was registered to vote, because I realized elections ain't won by how many shares on your page. It's won by how many polls are pulled. And so I ask you today is, if you run out of ideas when you're joining the organization, I'm giving you a few alternatives. Ensure you're registered to vote when you desire our organization. So that Sister Chisholm and Sister Harris work doesn't go in vain. And now when I look in the audience, I don't look at future Greek life members. I look at the next governors. I look at the next presidents. 
I look at the, the next entrepreneurs, the next millionaires, the next billionaires. That becomes a common word now in the space that people are looking like us. And so I challenge you to not make that acceptance at a high cost. And then my last charge to you is leadership is synonymous with membership. You cannot choose to be a member if you ain't serious about being a leader. How many leaders do I have in the room by the show of hands? All right, those with letters and colors look back. If they hand ain't up, don't pick them. It's important that you desire to join these organizations because you want to lead. Because unfortunately, if you didn't, we'd be picking everybody based off likership, not leadership. Right? And so I end with saying, I'd be lying to you if I told you that it's going to always be easy to be a leader. No, it's not. You're going to have to be determined. When I was growing up, we didn't have a whole lot of channels in my house. But we showed them on Fridays. We could watch Steve Urkel on Family Matters. Anybody remember the show Family Matters? You remember for real? What did Steve Urkel say then? And I ain't good at it. Let me feel y'all watched it. Okay. It came on 7.30 on Fridays. 7 o'clock was Full House. 8 o'clock was Step by Step. They put that black show right in the middle. I used to be so excited about it. Mom used to make all four of us share one bowl of popcorn. You talk about racing the heat. And, and in my excitement, I began to, to look at the show a little bit differently. Jaleel White was the star. Would, would you agree? His daddy was a post office worker. And his daddy told him that, son, I know you done read this paper for this casting call. But I want you to know that uh, I already talked to the postmaster and I have a job for you already. He says, I already have a plan for you. He said, daddy, can I still go in the morning? He said, you got to wake up at 6 a.m. He gets in the van, they're riding in. He picks him up at 6 a.m., Brother Quinn. And, and when, he pick, when he picks him up at 6 p.m., sorry, he says, did you make the show? He says, I didn't make it, sorry. He says, I told you. The next morning, he get ready to leave for work and come to find out his son was already in the van. He said, but where do you think you're going? He said, just drop me off to the set. He said, they got another audition. He says, no. He says, okay, okay, well then, uh, what you going for? He says, I just want to be there. And so he did it every day for two weeks, but every time he went, he sat in the corner and he simply mumbled the lines that other folks were saying because he never made the show. When they got ready to drop the show off the air, they come to the director and say they don't have enough viewers. The director says, I can make it a sitcom, and the writers agree, but I don't have the time to do another casting call, ladies. And so what does he do? He says, what about that little boy that be in the corner every, every day? Does he think he's going to come today? Lo and behold, Jaleel White walks in the door. He said, you got some glasses? He says, no. My daddy do. He ran out of the van, got the glasses, ran back in. He said, pull your pants high as they can go walk across the live set and say, did I do that? Why do I bring that up? Because based off his determination and showing up, even when he got a no, he realized his opportunity had finally came. Remember, he had a crush on somebody. Who he had a crush on, y'all? Laura. Okay, Laura had a little sister named Julie. Some of us don't realize it anymore because they wrote Julie off the show mm -hmm. to be able to afford next season to keep Steve Urkel on the show. It wasn't like power. We ain't kill nobody. We just rolled them off. You remember Mama Winslow, the grandmama? At the end, we didn't see her no more because they wrote her off the show because Laura did like somebody. It wasn't Steve, but she liked Stefan. And Jaleel White got so quick on the toes, he says, if I got to play two people, I need two checks. And so what they did was they wrote Mama Winslow off the show to be able to afford Steve Urkel and Stefan. Why am I sharing that with you today, Bowie State? I'd be lying if 300 of y'all was going to get a yes in all these organizations. But if you're serious about joining based on scholarship and service, you won't stop serving because you wasn't chose. You'll still show up. And in showing up, it might not be this semester, but one semester, you won't get to say, did I do that? Why am I so excited about ending the story there? It showed me based off determination, good brother, he ain't just get his bag, he got double his bag for showing up. And so I decided to do a soft Google as I was sitting in the back listening to the great leaders. He made $1.9 million off the reruns. 
His daddy told him, no, how many people got parents that say, I have a plan for you that might not align with the plan that you had? When my mama dropped me off to the resident halls the first year, she said, you're going to be a doctor. Well, y'all, I ended up getting a PhD, but it's not a medical doctor. She still don't know sometimes. Baby, I got a cough. How is it going? My mama's a cyber engineer. I got a PhD. I don't have no MD. She said, baby, tell me what I should take. Why am I sharing that with y'all today? Keep serving. Keep showing up. And remain determined. And I assure you, these organizations that have been here over a century, we're not going nowhere. But I don't want you to try to act in a moment of trying to be famous and pretend now that we have to know watching you before today. The commitment that you put in showing here today on time is the commitment I need you to show up into the classroom with. The commitment when I walked through and saw you lined up eager to get in here and be in that number of 338 students tonight, I need to ensure that you show up. When these organizations and these leaders are hosting service projects, you ain't got to have letters to pick up the rake. You don't have to have letters to commit to service. You don't have to wear their colors to commit to service. But if I was in the picking business, then would be the people that I choose when they interview. I hope that you remain determined. I hope that you remain committed. And I hope that Bowie State makes a commitment tonight that we will be notable contributions to Greek life and not just famous. Everybody standing on their feet, everybody standing up in the room. Everybody stand. I want you to raise your right hand super high. I'm talking about like we in church. We about to close out, y'all. You know how they, we ain't gonna reach out and touch. Raise it high. I want you to say, I state your name. Oh, we gotta do better than that. I state your name. I commit to be a notable contribution just a famous member. I commit to follow the policies of the university and the organization I choose to join. I commit to be a student leader and not just a member. Y'all good? Y'all ready to roll? One quick announcement, putting your hand down, check this out. Listen up. In 24 hours, you're going to receive an email from the lead firm. It's going to have your survey. You have to put your name and your email address in the assessment, the survey, to get credit for attending. We good on that? Yeah. So we're going to be looking for the email. We good on that, right? Yeah. Now, I can't come to an HBCU and not contribute to an HBCU. Is that right? Yeah. So y'all... In my efforts to be a notable contribution to Bowie State, four years ago I started a scholarship in my daughter's name, the Elena K. Benjamin Scholarship. If you can go to my website, leadfirmspeaks.com, L-E-A-D-F-I-R-M, speaks with an S, dot com, I get $10,000 every semester away and $500 scholarship increments. Our scholarship closes September 17th. LeadFirmSpeaks.com. Our scholarship closes September. That means if you post date that thing September 18th, my daughter helps me throw those in the trash. So on the 17th, that's when the committee's gonna make decisions, all right? Now, I had the same conversation last year, Brother Steve. Ain't nobody from Bowie apply. Doesn't mean everybody over here rich. I don't need a, so I need some folks to apply from Bowie. Can we make that commitment? So leaders. Leader, I'm talking about the leaders with letters on. If we're serious about our principle of scholarship, we used to have to use our privilege of membership to be sure the people that's behind us apply for this scholarship as well. So I look forward to hearing about how you assisted the people that's behind you apply for the scholarship as well. We good? Right? I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for your attentiveness. And I wish you all well in your aspirations to join our Greek Life organizations. It's been great. Let's give Mr. Benjamin a round of applause. Give us some more Bowie State energy, please. Thank you, thank you. All right, so a couple of things just some housekeeping. For everybody that attended today, when you go out, there should be a certificate with your name on it. That certificate will be your golden ticket when you go to access these organizations' information. For those who are not able to attend, you'll be able to find the video in two places. And I know I'm talking to everybody who's here, but please share this information with your friends. Place number one, it will be on the Office of Greek Life and Community Service page on YouTube. Place number two will be on the Go Fetch page on YouTube. 
The link for the quiz and the survey will both be in the description. You can do the quiz and the survey um, that uh, Mr. Benjamin was talking about <clears throat> and receive full credit for those who are not here. So please take that information back to the people who will ask you questions when you leave here. Once again, please make sure when you go out in the back there, hold on, oh, excuse me, thank you, appreciate it. All right, I'm not done, appreciate you. All right, so, hold on, excuse me, in the corner back there, young lady, okay, she just won't get us up, that's fine. Anyway, so, make sure two things, like I say, that you go out, your certificates will be waiting for you, and number two, that you pass this information. If you have any questions, or for some reason, if your survey is not, a certificate, excuse me, certificate is not there, email me at sstevens at bowiestate.edu. My last name is spelled with a P-H, so that's S-S-T-E-P-H-E-N-S at bowiestate.edu. We'll make sure that you get it. And then also, please make sure that you have any issues, email me or call me. Fair enough? All right, I know it's late on a Tuesday. I thank you all for coming out. You all have a great evening. Take care.